you want full marks in your GCSE exam, you need to know how to plot a histogram. It's a bit like a bar chart, but not quite. The frequency is the area instead of the height, and the bars are necessarily equally wide. It's frequency density that goes down the side. First we find the class width. How you might ask? Just calculate the difference between the ends of each class. For the frequency density we need to divide the area of the frequency by how much it is wide. And finally take out a pencil and plot until a histogram is what you got. Sometimes there's a question for the more able. Will the leave incomplete the graph and the table? You need a common bar. If you do not want to fail, combine them to determine the y-axis scale. Then fill in your table and your histogram, and you may get full marks in your GCSE exam. A histogram is like a bar chart, except that the area of each bar is proportional to the frequency instead of the height. So bars can have different widths, although they don't have to. To draw a histogram, you need a table with four columns. The classes, which provide your values on the x-axis, the frequencies, the class widths, and the frequency densities, which provide your values on the y-axis. The class width is the difference between the values at the end of each class. To calculate the frequency density, we divide the frequency by the class width. Each bar is a rectangle. The height is the frequency density, the width is the class width, and the area is the frequency. Here is an example. A convention of puzzle enthusiasts solved a tricky crossword as quickly as possible. The times taken in minutes are recorded in the table below. Complete the histogram and table. Firstly, we can complete the class widths. 0 to 12 is 12, 12 to 16 is 4, and so on. Now we can use the formula for frequency density. For the first bar, 180 divided by 12 is 15. The calculations are shown for the three bars we have frequencies for. Often in histogram questions, the y-axis has not been given a scale. To deduce the scale, we must use the only bar that the histogram and table have in common, which is the 12 to 16 bar. This bar has a frequency density of 27 and is 9 squares tall, so each square is 3 and we can fill in numbers on the y-axis. Now we can work out the frequency densities of the two other bars by reading off the y-axis. These are 18 and 12. We can then use these values to find the frequencies by multiplying the frequency densities by the class width as shown. Finally, we can use our scale to complete the histogram. The first bar has a frequency density of 15 and the last bar a frequency density of 6. We must ensure that we use these values shown in the first column when plotting these bars. And now you may get full marks in your GCSE exam.